Legendary singer-songwriter Carly Simon, best known for her mega hits You're So Vain yes. and Anticipation. She is now 70 years young. <laughs> yeah, I know. She has revealed to People magazine, and this is really shocking, I don't think she's ever said this before, that she had a series of sexual encounters beginning when she was just seven years old wow. with a teenage family friend. Simon described it as heinous, saying it changed her view about sex for a very long time. She said she told her older sisters at the time, but they didn't believe her. And when the boy was banned from their home one summer because her mom finally figured it out, Simon says she was devastated because she thought she was in a romance. Your, your libido overpowers everything, she says, and she details this in a new memoir, memoir that is coming out. We actually reached out to a child psychologist, Jennifer Harstein, who's been on the show before. Here's what she said, that children can, can have sexualized moments at any age, including seven. Libido is, something, libido is something that really comes with puberty, but in cases of inappro inappropriate sexual interaction, like Carly's talking about, there could be some sort of rationalization going on, that a child is too young to process it for what it is, abuse, yeah. and therefore thinks that it's love. It gets, like gets a distorted view. She feels view. Yeah. like a sense of guilt that she did something wrong, right. and it's putting the onus on her, which it really isn't on her. It was on the person who abused her. But there was a lot of backlash on the internet, because I was looking at this last night, because I love her, and I've yeah. heard about the memoir, and a lot of people felt, when she, you say you have a libido at the age of seven, you're sending out some message to predators that, yeah. who say, well, children are sexually, you know... Well, I think yeah. what happens is, and you know, I, and, I, and I've spoken about being a victim of yeah. that type of abuse, and what what happens is your child and then some you know someone is awakening something in you it's not you as a child saying I have this desire but somebody's taking your innocence and they're putting you your mind places you shouldn't go until you're an adult yeah. so I understand I don't think it was the way people received it I think she was confused and she had an awareness now of her body and she thought because this was happening that they were together because she doesn't understand relationships at that exactly age. Can't judge the way she processed it no, in right. Her right. Mind that's at her all. own yeah. experience yeah, yeah. 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 But it was sad. really shocking, yeah. But um, the, the memoir also says, on an entirely different note, she finally IDs the, the guy from E.R. Sylvain. Oh, yeah. finally. The one with the apricots. Yeah. Yes. Warren Beatty. Of Warren Beatty. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So Warren now that we know that, we can move on in life. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. October from the 2016 New York City taxi driver's calendar. There he is. <laughs> this is a real calendar. Mm -hmm. These are real wow. topless and nearly naked New York cabbies. Oh, how you doing? Oh, yeah. How you doing? <laughs> now, does this make you want to get in the cab or call Uber? <laughs> Which one? Well, I know what everyone's getting it's for I know sheet. what everyone's getting for Christmas. I love I it. Stocking <laughs> stuff. I would love one of these calendars because maybe now I can finally see what a taxi driver looks like. They never pick me up, so <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I can see them. No, I think it's cute. I think it's cute, too. Yeah, it's just it's a good. desperate attempt to bring back people using cabs because, I, I mean... I just think it's, it's funny. It's, it's cute. There's another calendar as well, too, which I love. I love the female cabbie, so it's great that they yeah, included yeah, yeah. her in the calendar. Some of the best conversations I've had are with cabbies. Some cabbies, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of cabbies who've come from overseas mm -hmm. who cannot, that are like doctors and lawyers yes, and absolutely. scientists, engineers, who can't get work here in their profession, so they become cab drivers, and they're really smart people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Talk to your cab driver. You'd be yeah. fascinated with the kinds of people you will meet. All right. And that money goes to charity as well.